Today we're going to be talking about the recent book Gene Father and I say we because I'm joined by Dr. Rhino. One of the reasons we're doing this is purely because you were messaging me, uh, Doctor. I begged and you. <laughs> I begged you. <laughs> and yeah, wanted me to talk about it. I got a lot of comments about it. I'm of course a big Belisarius Corn and Fabius Bile fan. Who isn't? Let's just be real. It was almost a shame to not have Trazen in this book. I will say he's referenced throughout. <laughs> yes, he is. But, but uh, yeah, this was real, uh, really a, a showdown between two of the most popular characters in the setting. Um, I guess to start at the beginning, what did you think of the book? I, while reading it, every chapter, every further along in the story, I'm like, that it was climbing the ranks of like favorite books, favorite collections. And now it really sits among my like top five favorite uh narratives in 40k that i've read so i enjoyed it a lot guy haley is always a solid read isn't he um the dark imperium trilogy is good he's written all of the belisarius cool novels now that i think about it he wrote uh, the great work he even wrote wolfsbane he wrote first dawn of fire this is actually his baby now that i think about it this kind of storyline and belisarius called is definitely put under the spotlight a lot in this book he, there's actually a trial of Belisarius Cool. They say it's not a trial, yeah. but it is. A, but it's, it, it is a trial, and it's quite it funny. Is a trial. Yeah, one of the things I thought they did really well in this novel was they summarized a lot of what Belisarius Cool has been doing in the setting. So in Warhammer Forty K, there's a very important material which is known as Blackstone, and basically there are three factions in the setting that all want to get lots and lots of Blackstone. If the Silent King gets it. Good news for him, bad news for everybody else, because if he gets enough of it, he can do what the Necrons used to do, but to a greater degree, and create these kind of null areas, these pariah nexuses within the galaxy, and basically turn off everybody's ability to connect with the warp, and that would kill almost everything in the galaxy. Blackstone can be used to influence the materiums, the immateriums impact on our reality, can kind of like supercharge the warp, basically. So if the Silent King gets it, he can use it to turn off the Immaterium's impact on real space. If Abaddon gets it, he can use it to increase the Immaterium's impact on real space, extend the Great Rift if he wants to. The consequences of this would be really dire. Demons would be pouring into our reality. And in the middle of these two extremes, so if either of them get it, it's very bad news. But if Belisarius Cool can get enough of it, he has a big theory that he can use it to basically close the Great Rift and then... The great divide within our galaxy will be gone. The bright light of the Astronomicon, the Emperor's divine light, would reach Imperium Nihilus once again. What a great day that would be for everybody. And yeah, he basically has this like trial where he's trying to convince these other Magoses to get on his side because a lot of them don't like him very much, do they? <laughs> no, and on top of that, it's not just a trial of call, but that trial is called by a inquisitorial agent who is also a magos who yes. uses their authority to come to that meeting and be like calls a heretic everyone get him and they're like bro chill yeah he's like i will not chill one of the other things the book does really well is demonstrate the ethos behind the mechanicus and the mechanicum i should say the dark mechanicum actually appear quite a bit and we do get this dialogue back and forth around what are the differences between the mechanicum and the mechanicus do not mix those up or youtube will come for you and mm -hmm. uh <laughs> and the differences between them and belisarius called of course to a lot of people is a heretic because he tries to invent stuff and create new things but belisarius called defends himself and he says no i don't create new things what I do is try to recreate the wondrous technology that our ancestors used to use. So technically, I'm not a heretic. And it's really funny because everything Belisarius called admits to, they all go, heresy, heresy. And then he's like, no, 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 no. Technically, yeah. technically, I'm not a heretic. But yeah, this goes on for a while. As you say, the Inquisition clearly hates Belisarius cool. <laughs> when this guy says that there's an Inquisitor who wants him dead, he's like, I mean, there's a lot of Inquisitors that want me dead. First time I was able to catch your live stream. Love your content, especially the Dark Throne vid. The Inquisitor monologue gave me goosebumps. Cheers. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I mean, I should say, so in that, another thing that's really interesting about this book. So Udi Araskian is the current Fabricator General of Mars. And this is a big spoiler if you haven't seen that vid or read the Dark, uh, the Vaults of Terror series. But Udi Araskian is the 
person who is basically in charge of fixing the Golden Throne, and he orchestrates this huge conspiracy with the Drukhari to try and fix the Golden Throne. Now, in the uh, disaster that comes when the Mechanicum tries to make this exchange with the Drukhari so they can get the components to fix the Golden Throne, it seemed like everyone was dead, but he is not. He is alive and well. He somehow got back through that webway portal and... Belisario School references him. He hates Belisario School, we should say as well. He's in that camp. And in Dark Imperium, there's this thing called the Cool Inferior, which is a device that is basically a copy of Belisario School's mind, and it allows Belisario School and Gilliman to communicate across vast distances. And that suggests to Gilliman that Belisario School wants to be fabricated general of Mars, but Belisario School is very adamant that he doesn't. However, the current fabricator general is very convinced that Cool is going to try and make a play for his position. And so the Mechanicus is very split between people who support the Fabricator General. And a lot of people do support Belisarius Cool because he has objectively found more STC resources than anyone ever. He brought the Primarch back. He's serving the Omnissiah in a very real way. So he has got a lot more supporters than I think I thought before going into this book. Sorry, I appreciate I keep rambling going on. <laughs> so no, 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 no. Well, you, you touched on something. You touched on something perfect, which is that in the sense that Call has been adamant that he doesn't want to be Fabricator General, mm. but his inferior has been alluding to wanting to. And even Call is like, I hope I didn't make that thing too independent, that it's now starting to make decisions and have desires of its own where it's now like now his inferior might want to be fabricator general and he doesn't which could set up a very interesting um you can chill sorry i know i know it's really exciting puppy but the uh, <laughs> the the idea that he told gilliman like oh no 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 it's not a it's not an abominable intelligence chill out it's just a i fed it in my decisions should certain circumstances arise and it's just going to spit out an answer based on those circumstances it's no big deal but yeah. that's he, an ai <laughs> he does hypothesize in this book that he thinks that potentially his work has been corrupted by the warp so every time the mccrag's honor makes some sort of warp jump he theorizes that maybe that started to corrupt the the cool inferior but whilst we're on this topic it does lead me into one of my favorite like funny points of the book which is that there is a opposite component of this and the belisari is cool has made a rebute gilliman inferior it's not a copy of gilliman's mind but it is an approximation from all of the understandings and pick vox recordings and all this kind of thing of gilliman from 30k so it's not exactly right. And he notes this as he's communicating with it. But every time he wakes this thing up, this thing is like really angry because it's like, cool, what is this heresy? What am I? Why have you made me into some sort of artificial intelligence? But uh, yeah, he uses it to basically run ideas past it because he wants to understand. If I say this to you, will you kill me just out of curiosity? I think is the idea. So it's objectively pretty funny. I found a lot of humor in the over-the-top description of how far and how much Call has to do. Like, it, it was mm. almost like an over-the-top cartoon where he has to, like, eye scan, breath scan, voice code, and then he goes down an elevator and down an incredibly long hallway, and then he has to do, like, a mind scan, and then another thumb scan, and then there's doors everywhere, and then he has to do a psychic imprint scan, all to get down to his layer where his his connection to the call inferior is as well as the gilliman inferior and it, it just it played into this idea of this over the top level of security that he's like i know i'm doing something nobody's gonna like so i'm just gonna hide it away it's lovely he also has in this book it's revealed a pet cryptic who he has managed to like trap and he plays regicide with this cryptic this cryptic of course hates him and hates everything about humanity and regularly tells cool that uh i'm gonna somehow day get out of here and i'm going to i think her words are something like i'm going to kill you and then i'm going to rewind time and kill you again but i'm going to allow you to retain the memories 
of the first time I kill you, so that it's just yeah, the 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 deaths will mount up, continual torture. She seems like a lovely girl outside of that, but it's very funny. And uh, yeah, he's actually there's a really well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna jump forward a little bit here. So there's a really interesting bit where he's basically trying to convince this cryptic that they're on the same side. You know, they both want to reduce the immaterium's impact on real space. So if they can kind of work together, if she can teach him more about how Blackstone works, that's a big part of Belisarius Cool's personal mission is to understand how the Necron pylons work, then they're working towards a common goal. However, later on, Fabius Bio teleports, basically, onto Belisarius Cool's ship, and he does a very similar thing. I call this video, one will save the Imperium, one will destroy it. And one of the reasons I did that is because Fabius Bio is quite clear that whilst he doesn't serve the Imperium, he does want to serve humanity. And so he sees his goal and Belisarius Cool's goal as basically the same. They're very similar goals. And so he offers to Belisarius Cool. He's like, look, I have a lot of knowledge that you don't have because in the previous Fabius Bile books, he actually does, he learns about cloning and geneticists and genetics from the Drukari. So it's far beyond Belisarius Cool's understanding. Whereas Belisarius Cool wants to create these new Primaris Marines, Fabius Bile's goal is to go beyond even that. So we see one of his creations called Porter, and she is like almost a match for Alpha Primus, who we'll talk about later, but he's a, basically the most powerful space marine to ever have existed. He's also creating these new types of human beings. And so he he offers Belisarius Cool, and he, he actually brings this up to Cool later, where he says, you are trying to convince the Necrons to work with you, and you you think that they're idiots for not working with you. I Look, I just I was just on the wrong side of a war here. I was in the mm -hmm. I was in the Emperor's children. I couldn't just turn myself in after the Horus heresy. They would have killed me. So then why why wouldn't you work with me? But you would work with the Necrons. The irony of that is ridiculous. It's completely insane. Um very interesting dialogue in this book. Top tier. Yeah, there Haley. there that on that specific point, it was really it was a very telling moment that Bio was definitely monologuing. He was doing the evil villain monologue. And then there was that moment that it felt like it switched from him doing kind of like the prepared, I'm better than you, you've chosen poorly speech to where exactly like you said, he's like, I wanted to come back, but I knew you would never take me back. Like the Imperium would never welcome me back despite everything I have to offer and my desire to come back and protect humanity. So I never did, even though and like I offer it to you knowing that you're going to say no. And that moment of like of seeing that that little break in Bile's armor of him being like he is without a doubt. And it's one of the reasons I love him. One of the most conceited, <laughs> hubristic people in the galaxy. He's like, I know how to save humanity. I know how to save humanity. No one else does. Everyone thinks that the, that uh, like Abaddon call everyone thinks that Primaris Marines new space Marines are going to save humanity he's like no new humans are going to save humanity hence the entire bile trilogy up to this point where he's creating his new men and seeding yeah. them gene stealer cult society style all over uh humanity yeah and, yeah, that, uh, yeah that was one thing we don't get too much on in this book the new men are referenced often but basically it's kind of revealed that the the new men that Fabius Bell uses in the book are not the true new men. So the these creations of Fabius Bio, uh, we don't actually know a lot about from this book. I'm interested to see what they do with that. That could be a that could be a very new unit for Warhammer 40k because Porter is a woman. For first of all, so she's not a space marine. She can be. She's undetected by psychers. I don't know if she's. She actually, has like plates on her skin. Yeah. Or like they described her having like plated armor bits on her skin she had different uh she had like i mean it's not something you'd see on a model but she had like secondary lenses on her eyes um yeah her, her lungs are better at uh filtering out poisons in the air than space marines lungs because he's like even i had to have my helmet on porter's sitting here on this planet <laughs> without anything yeah. and she's fine yeah and 
like they, and they did reference early in his meeting with the the mechanicum uh that his the fabius files kind of fallen on hard times so to speak especially given like everything that happens in the third book of his trilogy like a lot of his infrastructure is gone mm. and um so maybe that explains like why he's like put all of his resources into creating Porter as opposed to rebuilding his new men as a whole. But it does. It does still. I love the fact that every time Biles like, yeah, I'm down and out and I've got big. I've got a big contract with Abaddon I need to fulfill and all this stuff. But oh, yeah, I just happen to have this relic to the Mechanicum laying around that I can easily trade for the information that I need. Yes, yeah, like he offered. Yeah, he has a relic for the Dark Mechanicum, and then he wasn't gets, it a Man of Iron? Yeah, like, it's the, it's hinted to be something like that. Yeah, and I will say actually on that point because I think people find it interesting. One of the things I've been talking about a little bit on and off for streams for a while is I do think there will be a focus on Dark Mechanicum in the new edition of Warhammer 40k. I do think we'll see a Dark Mechanicum release, and seeing the Dark Mechanicum increasingly in novels is a strong nod there. I think the, one of the biggest pieces of evidence is that the Vashtor model is literally in the Dark Mechanicum armor. Like it's, It very much looks like he's going to be some sort of leader for that faction. And I'm really interested to see what they do because the Dark Mechanicum get a lot of... Sorry, I'm going on a tangent now. The Dark Mechanicum get a lot of description. They're obviously, they call themselves the True Mechanicum and they say, like, to us, you're the Dark Mechanicum. And they, they do all this... They have this viewpoint of, like, look, you, the problem is is that you guys believe in serving the machine guard but you don't actually use all of his creations because you don't use the warp for example and demons so anyway sorry um going back to one thing you were saying before about egos referenced very often in the novel these are two megalomaniac characters of course they are both geniuses and both of them believe they're smarter than the other one interestingly this is kind of a interesting cycle because one thing to know about Belisarius Cool is that he's not just Belisarius Cool. He is, in fact, multiple people together. So we see this in the book uh, Cool Belisarius Cool, the Grey Work, where he gets this soul merging ability, where he can essentially, uh, yeah, merge his souls with other people and dominate them. And one of the people he does this with is a character called Ezekiel Sedain who makes an appearance in this novel in a flashback from um, uh, Fabius Bile. That's his name. I forgot already. Uh, in a flashback from Fabius Bile where it's revealed that Ezekiel Sedain inducted Fabius Bile into the apothecarium the, yeah, into the apothecaries of uh, during the Great Crusade and taught Fabius Bile in the beginning and now Fabi now Belisarius Cool has the soul merged with um, Ezekiel Sedain. So in a way, Cool kind of taught Fabius Bile in the beginning, which is quite an interesting circle. That was there. such a that that little reveal was so cool for me. Like I, I'm I was listening to it as an audiobook while I was painting and I actually had to put my brushes down and I was like, oh, and it there's a lot of motifs of father and son, brother and brother in in this book. Yeah. And it felt that in that moment it was setting up at least initially it was a a mentor student. And then now they're peer to peer. And then obviously the father son motif is present elsewhere involving call. But I I love that connection that at one point especially in order to get that information to like have that memory. Cause it's very, it's right in the beginning of the book. Um, Biles standing there and he just kind of, he's getting wistful cause he's bored. He's waiting. The, the, the dark mechanicum haven't arrived. They're late for the meeting <laughs> Yeah, and he's just thinking about stuff. He's like, Oh my God, I am remembering something from the heresy era. This doesn't happen very often. So he makes a point to, after the meeting, go back and perform a very painful procedure on himself to get that memory out. Yeah. And, like, that's how important that stuff is for him. Yeah. And I think, actually, why don't you talk about that? Just because it comes to my mind, a fun little side point. So 
there's another part in the book where Belisarius Cool and his agents uh, they go to a webway gate, and this is really interesting little dialogue about what the Eldar's relation, Eldar Empire's relationship was like with humanity because that's a big question i think a lot of 40k fans if anything it's generally been overlooked i think by black library what i'm talking about here is this idea that the dark age of technology for at least about 5000 years coexisted with the eldar empire before old knight set in and then of course the birth of slanesh so for a long time people have always asked this question what was this relationship like here were the Eldar just so advanced that humanity just, you know, we just want anything to them. They just kind of ignored us and they just went about their lives as they do in their part of the galaxy or whatever. Or was there any kind of like proper trading? Was it in small parts, etc.? And interestingly, they go to this area in the book and Belisarius Cool has this idea that actually he thinks this was a meeting ground between the ancient human civilization and the Eldar empire and there would be like um uh treaties done what's the word i'm looking for there would be uh diplomatic relations that kind of thing done between these two empires yeah. which is a really interesting idea because even in the Eldar books that well i haven't read a lot of the Eldar books to be fair but even in the Eldar books that i have read th this is not something that's really covered and i, I think it's a bit of an oversight by gw right um, often so it's kind of cool i hope we touch more upon that because we really have no idea how the dark age of technology works in, in that kind of regard um which is pretty cool um i will yeah. say that reminds me you know you sorry so you talk about brother and son and father and son there's cool has two very big relationships and one of the things about in this book and one of the things about cool that's really interesting is he is pretty human so in his first novel canonically uh, Wolfsbane, he refuses a lot of augmentation. That's something that makes him stand out within the Dark Mechanicus. He refuses to advance up the ranks of the Mechanicum at the time before they become the Mechanicus. And that makes him stand out. And he's very human looking. And he has a best friend called Friedrich. Friedrich Vo. Q V O, I think it's spelled. And Vogue. Yeah, Vo Quo. Yeah. But he's 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 still around. He's still, he's still, is still here. <laughs> he's still around. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's he, Belisarius is cool as like he uh he he actually dies when the soul merging with Ezekiel Sedane happens. Um I'm trying to remember that's been a while since I read that book, but Sedane I think shoots Friedish to force Belisarius cool to soul merge with him to go, look, if you soul merge with him with me, I'll save your friend. Basically is the idea. However, they do so merge. Belisarius Cool has basically got such a big ego that he ends up dominating Sedane instead of the other way around because he Sedane just underestimates how big of an ego um, Belisarius Cool has. But then, uh, uh, yes, Friedrich dies. However, he kind of saves his body and his brain. And he tries to clone him and replicate him multiple times. And yeah, this is quite... It's quite haunting, actually. It's pretty dark in this book. This this version of um, Friedrich is he realizes he's been. He, this is like a he's number eighty nine, I think, in this book. So eighty eight. He's number eighty eight, yeah, yeah. and eighty seven is still alive out <laughs> yeah. there. This is the first time there's been two of them at the same time. Yeah, and and he can actually like uh, this is a bit where he has like these visions and he can kind of see these other lives he's had. So he's died you know 87 at the times and uh, like so yeah it's pretty haunting but uh yeah cool in a it, it's it's 40k so it's pretty grimdark but it is kind of done from love and it's kind of quite a sweet moment that cool just can't let his best friend die and it's yeah it's really quite beautiful in in, in a very grimdark 40k way but that's what, that's what we love right mm -hmm. the yeah. the potential though that like cloning he's a uh, Paul is going about it from the from like the more mechanical side, like he's trying to develop a what is essentially an AI, an artificial intelligence that is freedish in a perfect manner in a robotic body, because they're like, oh, yeah, uh, we tried bipedal. We gave him tracked legs at one point <laughs> yeah. um, that didn't work out. Um, so he's constantly putting him in different bodies and so on. So it's never the same foe. But bile is the clone lord he's mm. made perfect clones of primarchs making a perfect clone of freedish would be child's play for him 
you got to be pretty good at what you do to make the Drew Carey stand up and take notice and be like, you want to, you want to, you want to come do like a symposium and we'll like, we'll do some knowledge trading here. And at the same time, he cannot even come close to matching Paul's mechanical intelligence. And I think that they're both incredibly egotistical, but Bile has tasted defeat enough times to have just the, the barest hint of humility and knowledge that he isn't perfect all the time. Yeah, I mean, Bile's relationship with himself is super interesting because, like I say, in a way, he really does kind of see himself as the good guy. He does think he's serving humanity, trying to save humanity. But anyone that's read, you know, not only the Fabius Barrel trilogy, but even just like Fulgrim, the uh, uh, Horus Heresy novel, then you'll know that he, his original goals are very egotistical he kind of is just in search of knowledge his legion is in decay and when you go back to like the palatine phoenix but by the time you get to fulgrim he's just trying to improve upon the emperor's work out of pure ego so he definitely has rose tinted glasses and how he views himself they're both incredibly hubristic and and i'm mm -hmm. not going to pretend that bile is anything other than a selfish self-centered me megalomaniac but that's why we love him. he's lost before He's lost hard. His perspective has changed rather than like, I'm going to make a better space Marine. He's like, I'm just going to make a better human. Space Marines were a failed experiment that mm. like, look at what has happened since we tried to make space Marines. Yes. He does justify that basically by saying that the Emperor's big mistake was using the warp in the creation of space Marines. He doesn't entirely know how because he doesn't understand the process of how the Emperor stole the fire from the Chaos Gods and put it in the Primarchs. But he believes that using the warp to create what essentially, in a, in a roundabout way, created the Space Marines was a huge mistake that will always lead to corruption. He thinks he can create incorruptible people. And this really goes back to this idea of something we explore a lot in his trilogy, which is this idea that he hates chaos. He hates the chaos gods and they want him, but he is not interested. He has one of, I think, the single most iconic interactions with a being of chaos in any 40k novel now until the end of time. A Keeper of Secrets shows up and says, Ah, Fabius Bile, I am the blah, 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 Lord of the this. <laughs> and he's just like, you're a figment of my imagination. Go away. <laughs> I just realized the, there is there's yet another connection between Bile and Call in the sure. sense that Fabius has a daughter. Call has a son. That's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we can yeah, we can go there. There's a huge build up in the book, and then they meet when they talk on Cool's ship. And Fabius Bile basically offers Cool, let's work together. Cool says no. So Fabius Bile actually unleashes his Necron Cryptek, who Cool ends up having to fight because obviously she wants to kill him. Basically, Fabius Bile goes through all of this stuff. He convinces Cool that he wants access to like this gene seed laboratories of the emperor that cool gets earlier on in, in earlier books and it's all a ruse and in the end everything fabius bile does is basically to get his hands on alpha primus alpha primus is a very important character and exactly as dr ryan talks about there when it comes to his relationship with belisario is cool the big reveal at the end of the book is belisario school says very seriously that this is his son. Alpha Primus is his son. That's why they are so closely connected. Uh, exactly what that means, he doesn't explain. He doesn't actually say genetic son. But that I kind of read it like that. I think he might have. Yeah. But it's high school's genetics it, it, it literally in him. And Alpha Primus is a mixture of maybe all, certainly multiple different legions together. He has a huge number of legion gifts. Uh, I think yeah, he's, he's a psyker. He's... he's um, Stronger, super sneaky too. Yeah, yeah, he's, he, he has a myriad of abilities. I honestly think we'll probably see him gain uh, Corvus Corax's invisibility ability. It's also interesting because he effectively might see bits of uh, the second and eleventh legion in him. So there's stuff like that which could be really interesting to explore. But yeah, in theory, he has a huge number of abilities, and Fabius Bow in the end of the book rips out his. Um, his prima uh primogenitic lands i want to say yeah he pulled out one of the things that the apothecaries take out when you die because there's yeah. two of them the one in the neck and the one in the stomach or yeah. something like that he was convincing uh call that he was going for the vaults to try to get the actual physical data but he's like 
no, I know you poured all of that into your creation. So yes. I'm just going to take that. I'm going to, I don't need the raw data. I need the finished result. Yeah. You're going to save me a bunch of time. Yeah. And then Porter, Porter and Alpha Primus face off, and it's a super awesome fight. It, it was such yeah, a it was good, a really cool I was fight. listening to it, but it was yeah. a great uh, thing to have narrated. Because Alpha Primus is, is a very confident figure, understandably, because he's so powerful. And in Better Science called The Great Work as well, we see this, where he's such an imposing figure and far more powerful than any other primary space marine. But he can't detect Porter coming towards him. He, he, he For some reason, he can't tell. And she runs like a, I think 40 miles per hour, which is like a faster than like a horse so she <laughs> she's unbelievably yeah. quick but yeah she's not a space marine of course something new so it's gonna be really interesting to see what fabius power does primaris chaos space marines are directly mentioned in this book not as a currently existing thing but as something that abaddon has clearly tasked fabius power with so fabius power he's obviously got his own agenda and he actually says in the book he doesn't serve abaddon but you have to do what Abaddon says because he will ultimately kill you. So yeah, the, whether we see some sort of development on the Chaos Space Marine Legionary would be really interesting. Also, I think the other thing on uh, Alpha Primus, so interesting, when he sleeps, he can kind of, what would you call it, like spirit walk, uh, like Magnus the Red does. Astral project. Astral projection, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that he notices about himself, and this is where Belisarius Cool has maybe messed up a bit, there's this description that talks about how his soul isn't properly attached to his body. I think the idea is basically that he he he's Belisarius Cool doesn't realize just how powerful he's made this Primaris body, and I I think it's basically the idea is you're 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 getting like almost a Primark level soul and you're stuffing it into a Space Marine, and that doesn't quite work. I think he's I think he's 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 got far more power than he uh, understands. I thought that was more from the and I like that interpretation almost more than the way I was originally interpreting it as he because call like kind of this was my his custom mix his like his way of trying to have his cake and eat it too. He's like, oh, well, Alpha Primus needs to be a psyker. So he's like messing with stuff, trying to make a psyker. And in doing so, he's artificially creating a soul that can interact with the warp in the way that a psyker does and in doing so not knowing fully what he's doing so i imagine that a psyker naturally born psyker their soul is like double seamed stitched like a ship sail well stitched together very hardy well connected but <laughs> call in order to get the same effect attaches alpha primus's soul like with shower curtain rings <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's not quite there it's flapping a lot more yeah i definitely think there's a really kind of go-to comparison with primarchs because as you read the book one of the things F fabius Bauer says early on is that he wants to create a being to lead his new men the new men are as the name suggests, going to be his new creation. He basically wants to make a Primark that can't be corrupted. And then he steals the glands of Alpha Primus. And so I think, you know, certainly Fabius Bauer believes that maybe with some tweaking, Alpha Primus is going to become Primark level or at least another version of him. So his power scaling is going to be fascinating. Gilliman is aware of Alpha Primus, certainly. So I... I can't wait to see what they do with this character. They're clearly building up to something. Like, I was kind of, like, scaling him in my mind. Like, you have, like, on the ground, like, a base-level human, and then up here's a space marine, and then way up here's a custody, and then way up here's a, mm. a Primark. And he was kind of like, I was like, okay, space marine. Oh, he's a really good space marine. Wow, he's doing some crazy stuff. Like, he was approaching <laughs> custodian level. Mm. I would put him around like, custodian, Cassidy's. yeah. And but but your point of that, like he's still like every time we encounter him, he's getting better with his powers as a psyker and custodies are not psychers. So imagining a custodian with psyker abilities is downright terrifying. Yeah. And that makes me as a Fabius Bile fan even more excited to know that Porter went one on one with essentially a custodian who can do mind powers. And yeah fought him essentially to a draw i wouldn't say she strictly won but she yeah. didn't lose so fabius bow's idea is basically he thinks that he's the smarter person but that's mm -hmm. is cool has access to far more resources than him including this like untainted gene seeds from the emperor with that it'll be interesting to see what what he can do 
But the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the future of the Mechanicus in Warhammer 40k, because that is being set up in this book. Basically, Belisario is cool. It looks like he's been able to convince a decent amount of resources to work with him. And there's this crazy plan that they have in this book to... I'm, I probably won't explain this exa exactly right. It's a very complex plan. There's there's a there's a planet in the war in heaven. So 60 million years ago, this planet was destroyed and it would have a lot of knowledge and resources on how the Necron pylons work. However, despite the fact it was destroyed 60 million years ago, the planet was destroyed by the, the old ones or the Necrons creating a black hole. They're literally that powerful thing to create black holes to destroy planets they don't like. Mm -hmm. However, the reason that's actually a boon for the Mechanicus is because, and as the science will check out here, I'm certain, as you get closer to a black hole and the gravity increases, as gravity increases, the time dilates and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So Belisari is cool, mm -hmm. has this plan basically. They can still get to this planet, even though it was destroyed 60 million years ago. It was the guy during the the conclave he came forward he had the the trench coat on he went wibbly wobbly timey wimey and then he left <laughs> exactly yes yes it's good so good to see david Tennant back again uh yes, yes. <laughs> no absolutely but yeah there is gonna be you know i mentioned the last stream actually like oh, i worry about gw messing around with time travel too much because it's Often the death of a setting is doing too much with time travel. But this could be actually a really fun story. And if they write a story about the Mechanicus going back to the war in heaven, oof, that would be They've fascinating. They've said it, and they have set it up in a way that it is such a specific set of circumstances that are allowing them to go back to one planet at mm. one specific point in time. Yeah. and Just to get get this knowledge get out that's the plan it's not call going all right Friedrich, it's time we go back to the future yeah. and then he hits gonna, a button and then they just we're, teleport we're back in time we're gonna shoot the silent king in the head as, as a baby it's gonna be fine <laughs> <laughs> what if we just what if we just found the tyranid hive mind and yeah yeah <laughs> what's wrong with you yeah no exactly yeah that's that's a very different type of grim dark that they try and stay away from i think but uh yeah that's the plan so Arabs exist i'm i'm very excited for that storyline it was a yeah. really enjoyable read the only part of it that i was like obviously it to me it felt like padding but for an imperial knights enjoyer the fact that you got oh, like yeah. several strong um indications of like how the machine spirits inside yeah, yeah. um knight's work where he's just like oh my god old man shut up I yes <laughs> so good oh yeah that was really funny um yes yeah, uh house tyrannis who are a knight very closely affiliated with mars and oh, what's his name it's something it's not just something the elder melvin the very elder that's it melvin the very melvin the very elder and uh yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah he's yeah this this very old if sorry if you're not familiar I should explain this uh imperial knights the way they work is that they the machine spirit like takes on the souls of ancestors uh that have piloted the machine in the past so these ancient these imperial knights are run through multiple generations so you've got your ancestors in your ear at any one time and chaos knights likewise they've got their ancestors screaming like expletives at them because they've fallen to chaos and it's like yeah it's like having your grandma in your ear constantly saying uh like oh don't forget to sh don't forget to shoot the little ones dear no, <laughs> yeah grandma yeah i got it i got it i got it yeah no totally but yeah very fun book so fulgrim's code is in trayson's collection and he unleashes them for lols sometimes i know the storyline got shelved but maybe so i mean this is the thing right at the moment i think it's probably fair to say I don't think GW ever intend to revisit that storyline. But that could change. They genuinely could do. They will write books that they think you like and they will release models that they think you'll buy. So I think Josh Reynolds, he doesn't write for GW anymore. So it's unlikely you'll see him. But in theory, another writer can pick it up. Always hold out hope. And let, let's face it, Belisario School made the Sons of the Phoenix and they are the worst cover ever. So um, it'll be interesting to see. What they do mm -hmm. 
which traitor legions will get primaris first uh that's a good question i mean the black legion would be the obvious answer because fabius bar would love to get abaddon off his back so that would be a really good way of doing it one interesting link that i would love to see them do from this would be to epimetheus so if you're not familiar epimetheus is a gray knight from the pandarax books and oh, what book <laughs> and it's he's a very interesting character he was originally a dark angel he becomes one of the first gray knights he's very very powerful he's he's in stasis he comes out of stasis his job is to guard this uh cave where there's this massive nurgle greater demon uh the prisoner of the emerald cave and he ends up big spoiler at the end of that book he gets captured by abaddon and he has a very horrific ending his ending is that he ends up having like all loads of his glands and stuff pulled out. He gets strung up and then he has blanks sewn onto him so that he can't use his powers at all. Anyway, one of the things that I am pretty sure Abaddon says at the end of that novel, it's quite an old novel now, is he says he's going to gift to Fabius Bile some of the uh, Grey Knight uh, gene seed, parts of the gene seed so that Fabius Bowl can try and create something new. And that would be a really interesting way to pull this, this Alpha Primus storyline in with this kind of older lore surrounding Epimetheus because he's a really interesting character. It's a really cool idea. And then he basically, after this one book, it was a campaign GW ran at the time. After that campaign, it, we don't hear from him ever again. So it would be really interesting to see Maybe Fabius Bow used the Alpha Primus uh, glands with the material got from this founding Grey Knight member. Maybe make something new. You know, Fabius Bow could make some crazy stuff with that. I just want to see him stuff all that into his new men. Like he's going to get take the bare minimum. He's going to use the stuff that Abaddon knows is associated with because they've obviously taken like a dead Primar space brain, cut it open and been like, that's new. Yeah. And uh, he they like, we want that. I want those in, in those guys like Bile, give him that. But he's going to hang on to the really good stuff for himself. Basically, he's going to he's going to pull a Game Boy. He's going to give <laughs> Abaddon the original gray box Game Boy or maybe even a Game Boy color. But he's going to be over he'll, here building the Game Boy SP. Yeah. <laughs> No, totally. And we're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and more compact. Then creations of Bile can really mean something. Like, I'd love yeah. to see Creations of Bile have the, the new men as their, like, souped-up version of, like, not quite a space marine, not quite a chaos cultist. Mm. Well, he has That'd this... kind of cool. In, in one of the earlier um, Fabius Bile books, I've forgotten their name, the Consortium. He has the Consortium. And these yes. are all, like, apothecaries that work under Fabius Bile. And I was like, that would be a really cool unit to release someday. He has a college. Yeah. A whole college. But that and that would, be, that would be really interesting that if in Creations of Bile, you could run apothec like more than three apothecaries yeah. and they're, or they're automatically squad leaders for your legionnaires. Yeah. Just this one 10-man apothecary squad. <laughs> or, yeah, the, the squad <laughs> just that never dies. supercharges whatever they, they want. Um, so I would just say, Murph, thank you so much for donating the, uh, yeah. the memberships. You're absolutely legend. It means the world. I do see support the channel. It means so much, man. Thank you to everyone who does support the channel. Um, which does remind me, uh, please do like the stream if you can like the stream and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. All that good stuff. Um, yeah, it really means a lot to people who support the channel. Um, and people seem to generally like this content, um, which is been really nice so thanks to everyone dr rhino thank you so much for coming on man um this has been an absolute yeah, it was joy my, i begged i begged you to do yeah. it so thank you for letting me thank you for letting me yeah. hang out with you and talk to you about like one of my favorite characters and belisarius call yeah i mean yeah if you do just want to hang out and have a good time or if you're super into painting as well then uh dr rhino your twitch um i'll put a link for it in the description go check out you do put your stuff okay. on youtube as well don't you i think i saw uh, uh, I'm yeah. really bad about that. I tried yeah. learning how to edit things, and I was like, <laughs> "No, live content forever." Fair, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, hang out on Twitch, Doctor Rhino underscore. Um, you'll see a little purple Rhino logo. That's me. Yeah. Um, my schedule is switching up a little bit. I got a new job that has me working nights, but 
that's actually mm -hmm. beneficial for uh, for you folks over across the pond because that means if I'm streaming, it'll probably be in my morning, your afternoon. Sweet, sweet. And I should say, well, you're also, yeah, I've seen you've been doing quite a few things with playing on tabletop, who are a very large uh, tabletop channel. If you're you're not familiar, um, chat like so, yeah, amazing, amazing content. I you do actually have do a video coming out with them in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. you actually did a battle report with your dad, which I thought was so funny. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, good. that was pretty cool. But yeah, thank you to everyone who watched this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments, you know, what do you think of this book? Have you read it? And uh, yeah, what do you think this is setting up? Like like we say, this is setting up big storylines for the Mechanicum and for the Chaos side. And I think some Dark Mechanicum stuff in there as well. So I'm pretty excited. Or True Mechanicum, I should say, if there's any Dark Mechanicum fans in the audience. But uh, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.